All right, today I'm gonna be making a bench out of this slab of black cherry. We got this from Chris Maltby from Do It Tree Care. He gave us this on a trade a while back and uh, been trying to think of something to make out of it. And I think, uh, I think a bench for out front would be real nice. Maybe stick a price tag on it, see if anybody wants to buy it. We're gonna be using uh, Arbor Tech Auto Plane. Been wanting to get one of these for a while. Seen a lot of people using them and uh, what they do, how fast they do it and how clean you get results wise, uh, I'm excited to give it a shot. So we're gonna see how that works and we're gonna come up with some metal legs for the bottom of it and go and set it out front. So let's see what this thing will do. All right, so what I'm doing here is I kind of got a little ahead of myself with that with that turbo plane. Just want to try it out real bad. But uh, what I'm going to do is make a template so that as I'm doing this, I can make sure that uh, that we're getting a continual shape across the bench so that we got uh, a little bit of a uh, uniform shape to it instead of uh, just having it all over the place, just eyeballing it. This will help us make sure we keep it within the right shape, the shape we're going for. All right, now we're gonna take this, we're gonna cut this out of a piece of uh, plywood and then we'll have a nice stiff uh, gauge for telling Telling us where we're at and where we got to take more off. So essentially what we're doing with the gauge is when we got that set down in there and we're sitting flat front and back, then we know that we're dug in deep enough and we know that we're following the shape the way we want to. So we can just use this going along to make sure that we're getting where we want it to be. Or at least close enough. It doesn't have to be perfect, obviously, but uh, this will help us get it get pretty close to uh, the shape we're going for. All right, in retrospect, I think we got a little ahead of ourselves because this would be a hell of a lot faster and easier if I knew what depth I was trying to reach down to. So, because we still got flat in the front and the back, I screwed a couple pieces of aluminum tube onto the, uh, the bottom of the saw here, and this way I can set the depth. We'll chalk out some lines, run the saw, and then when I go through my saw marks, I'll know I got deep enough. Um, if I did this kind of thing more often, I probably would have thought of that ahead of time. But this ought to work. They won't be perfect up at the end and at the beginning just because I had to lift the blade. Should have maybe welded a couple of braces across there, but if that's the only spot where we got to do a little eyeball and that won't be so bad. Who are you talking to? <laughs> the camera. 
They want to know. Maybe they don't want to. You guys don't want to know? They might not want to know. Oh, I could be wrong. I'd want to know. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be weird to put together. Well, I started and then figured out I should do this. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's good, yeah. though, because now people will know, oh, I should do that ahead of time. Because it's a good idea. And it would have made it a lot easier if we would have started with that. Yeah, because, like, now you can see this is, was almost yep. there. And, you know, that one's almost there. Yep. Exactly. And right, yeah. You run that, and then... Just until the lines are gone, and now it's even all the way across. Ta-da! What's you looking at? I'm just looking at the depth of each one across here on the edge. Yeah. So we going all caddy wampers? <laughs> we are. <laughs> yep, now I'll be able to really go at it, and I'll know when I'm going through the... Having these lines in there is definitely the way to go because it makes you have a lot more confidence and you're not worried about going too deep so you can just kind of keep going and watch your lines as you go. But this works good because we're doing this on a linear plane so everything's remaining the same from one end to the other across the bat. Now I got a trick I learned from uh, Annabelle Trades watching a video that she was doing making a uh, mandolin and what she had done was essentially the same thing but because she had a, a compound curve that changed as it went, she used a drill press and just went different depths around the surface so that she could get a curve in both directions and make sure that she was still hitting her point. So she still did the same thing. Um, she was obviously using hand planes, finger planes, things like that, but, uh, but it let her know when she got to that point. So if you're trying to do something like this on a complex curve or a compound curve, um, that would be the way to go instead of cutting lines, just use a drill bit. Find What's your way. What's the difference between a complex curve and a compound curve? Uh, one's more complicated. top all sanded off so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some legs for it now, a friend of mine Jack Coleman he works doing uh, a lot of different things as well as automotive repair but he also works with larger uh, farming equipment combines things like that they had to redo the chains on one of the machines he gave us all the old roller chain off of it and I think this makes some pretty cool looking legs for our bench all right so what I'm doing here is I'm gonna take a couple pieces of flat we know we want the legs to be 16 inches tall and we get lucky here, our little welding table is uh, 16 inches wide. So I'm going to clamp one of these along the bottom of it and clamp one along the top. And that way I can easily push these up to make sure that we're sitting flat, top and bottom. And I'll just draw out whatever shape I'm going to be making the legs into on the table with a sharp end. Bend the chain up into that, weld the links together to make it all solid. So what I'm going to do in here is just basically making a template so I can flip it over, trace it onto the uh, table on both sides to make sure that I get the exact same shape, both front and back.
Now, it's my opinion you should always know a little bit of the science behind the materials that you're working with. And even though we're just making a, a live edge slab bench here, I think I still want to explain a little bit about what's going on inside the wood so that maybe the next part I'm about to show you will make a little more sense. All right, so inside the tree, if we were just to cut it right down the center, you're going to have these different sections here. So just to give you a rough idea. So this is going to be what's known as a pith. This is going to be your heartwood. This is going to be your sapwood. And there's, there's actually uh, two components here. One's going to be the, uh, the cambium. I'm going to misspell this. I know I am, so don't correct me on it. <laughs> I think that might be right. Okay. And then you got, obviously, your bark. What's going on is <clears throat> your tree is growing up from here. So this would be like if we sliced the wood. Now, if we take that and turn it on its side and we zoom in, way in, we're going to have these longitudinal cells that'll make up the majority of the wood, but we're also going to have ray cells, which are going to be shorter and they're going to run perpendicular to our longitudinal cells. So when we look at the edge of the wood here, sometimes you'll be able to see little lines running out from the center out towards the outside of the wood. This is going to be those ray cells, that's actually what you're looking at, are those ray cells that are crisscrossing with your longitudinal cells. Now, what those ray cells do as we're sanding the wood is they've got a really beautiful silvery look to them. You're going to see that a lot more in figured woods, but I'm going to show you that we can see it even in woods that aren't figured if we just do the finishing right. All right, so our longitudinal cells are running this way. The ray cells are running this way. Now, you can really see the ray cells where there's figuring in the wood, and we actually do have some beautiful, some beautiful figuring up here in the wood, which is just defects in the growth, or even if not defects, growth around where a branch would have been coming out, or where you would have a, a split in the tree of branching, which is what we have here at the other end of this. And even though we finished sanding this with a really fine grit paper, because I was using a powered sander, it's actually taking that wood down and making tiny marks in it. I mean, I went all the way down with 600. You look at this thing, you're not going to see marks in it, but they're still there. It's the same with like a flat paint. If you look at flat paint under a microscope, it looks like a forest. That's why it looks flat. It's because of how it reflects the light back at you. To get this to reflect light back at us so that those rays really pop out, and that'll really help show the shaping we've done here on the bench, what we got to do is we have to sand with the grain starting with the 400 grit, and then we're going to go to, to a 6. And we can go more than that, but because we're going to be putting a tongue oil on this and then polishing it after that sets, uh, we should be good with just the 4 and the, and the 600. Okay, so we're not going to see the cambium. So actually, if you come and look at the end, or sorry, not the cambium, the pith. So here's, your, uh, here's where that pith would have been. But it was cut out, obviously. So. This is our heartwood, our sapwood. This is gonna be our cambium, and then this is our bark. So, just so you, just in case I lost you with the, uh, with the Sharpie drawing. <laughs> but, but if we look here, uh, again, I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick it up, but these little marks that you see here, where we've started, started to cut away into the wood, you can see these little check marks. That's, that's going to be your rays. Those are the ray cells. And once we do this, those will really pop. Here you can see in this figuring, we've got just all kinds of really cool looking stuff going on where this is curling. So, very, very pretty rays. And once that's sanded down and polished, it's really going to pop out. And I'll be using a hard block where it's curving in this direction, but obviously to get into that curl there, I'm uh, going to need a soft block for that, which is just a really heavy piece of foam rubber with a little bit softer neoprene on the one side. Now, even just from the little bit that I've already done it, you can already start to really see that shine in that wood and those rays just start jumping out at you. Considering some of the boys that we have, we should probably use like an epoxy resin fill those in and that should have been done way before the sanding got as far as it has. But I'm just going to try and go over this with a tongue oil and we'll uh, see what kind of results we get.
All right, so now we got all the tongue oil on there and we let it sit and dry overnight. So it's good and hot on the outside. Now what it's gonna say on the back of that can is to take some steel wool, fine steel wool and hit this and then to add another layer. Well, you can do that, but I wouldn't recommend it. You know, it says right so on the can because what this is doing is it's soaking down, it's penetrating into the wood, but it's also leaving a little bit of a layer on the top. Now, you can really pull those rays out of the wood if you polish this. Now, that's why they're saying to use stainless steel, but it doesn't really work very good for polishing. So what I recommend doing is taking a scrap of leather, just got a scrap of some chrome tan leather, you take some red rouge, and you can heat this up with a lighter if you need to, but you just get that on that leather, and then we're gonna use this to polish over the top of this, and it'll make this look like glass. This stuff works really good, especially for smaller woodworking projects, but uh, we'll see how well it holds up on this bench. And there you have it, there's our finished bench. You can polish it a little bit more. The more you polish it, the more you're gonna bring out the details in the wood. But I got other things I gotta do. So that's as shiny as it's getting. I hope you enjoyed the video. You guys take care.